everyone! Today we're creating this four leaf clover graphic t shirt. You can draw your own design if you'd like, but if not, go to the link in the description where you can get this pattern and then print it out. If you have a light box, you can use that, but if you don't, just tape it up against a window. Then take some freezer paper, which you should be able to get at just about any grocery store. And we're going to tape it up against the printout. And you want to make sure that the paper side is up and the more plasticky, waxy side is against the printout. Then take a pen or a pencil and carefully trace around all the edges of the four leaf clover. Once you're done with that, you can carefully remove the freezer paper from the window. Now we're going to repeat the process with the word lucky. So I just cut a small piece of freezer paper and just like before have the paper side up and the plasticky side down and go ahead and tape that against the printout and then take your pen and trace around all the letters. Now I've designed this printout so you don't have any complete loops in the letters, but just make sure as you're tracing it that you don't make those complete loops on the top of the L, the top of the K, the lower part of the K, and the bottom of the Y. When you're done tracing, remove it from the window. For this next step, you'll need an X-Acto knife. And we're just going to carefully cut around where we just traced. So once you've cut it out, separate the pieces, and we're going to be taking this outside piece that looks just like this. Now repeat the process, carefully cutting out the word lucky. And once again, we'll be using that outer piece. And if you made a mistake like I did and accidentally cut part of the bottom of the Y out or something like that, that's okay. Just save the piece that you accidentally cut out and we can still use it. Now I'm taking the shamrock pattern and just arranging it where I want it on the shirt. So you can have this go straight across or kind of turn it on an angle like I have it here. Keep in mind with the word going across, it's easier to read if it's at an angle like this. Then take an iron on like a medium to high heat and just go ahead and carefully go over the entire pattern making sure that all those points and all the edges are secured to the fabric. This is really important because this is how you'll get really clean nice edges. Now it's time to start painting. If you can find paint that's specifically for fabric that would be your best choice but this is some multi-surface acrylic paint that works with fabric and I will link it in the description. Now this is a really important step that I forgot to do until after I started painting, but take a piece of cardboard or something similar and stick it into the shirt so it's underneath where you're painting and this will protect the other side of the shirt. I used a foam brush to apply the acrylic paint and I started at the edges and moved towards the center. Make sure to apply a lot of paint right along all the edges to keep them looking sharp. Then just fill in the entire four leaf clover and I did two to three coats to make sure that it was completely covered and the texture was the same across the four leaf clover. Once you're done with that, before it's dry, take the freezer paper and just start to peel it up. It should end up looking like this and let that dry overnight. When it's completely dry, this is optional, but I took the iron and went over it just to flatten it for the stencil. Then I took the word and decided where I wanted to position it on the four leaf clover, making sure that the spacing was pretty equal all around it. You'll need to be extra careful when you iron this on because it doesn't stick quite as well with the paint underneath. So spend some time making sure that all of it is completely attached to the shirt and there's no parts of the letters that are not quite attached. And if you have any pieces you accidentally cut off, now would be the time to iron them on. Unfortunately, I forgot to do that, but it's still fixable later. I decided to use gold paint for the word, 
but it's not super opaque paint, so I did a base coat of white underneath just to counteract the green from the shamrock and to have a better base for the gold. Again, this is the multi-purpose acrylic paint, and as you're painting this, you'll need to be really careful with the brush. Don't ever push it or pull it, just dab more from the top, and this will keep the edges intact. When you're done with this, you'll want to let it dry for a few hours. This way, the white paint won't start to mix with the gold paint when you apply it. So now I'm just adding the gold paint. And again, you'll need to be really careful with those edges. And just keep applying coats until you like the look of it. And when you're done, you can peel up the freezer paper. And as you can see, some of the edges ended up being a little rough, but that's all fixable. So I'm just going to take a small paintbrush and some of the green paint and come in and cover where that white is showing through. To fix the bottom of the Y, I took some of the white acrylic paint and painted where I wanted the green to be, just to have a base for the green. And while that was drying, I decided to add a shadow along the left sides of the letters to really make the lettering pop. So just turn it whatever direction is easiest for adding the shadows. And I took a small paintbrush and some of the same kind of paint but in black and just added a thin line along all the left sides of the letters. And it's okay if you make mistakes, we can come back and fix those later. So it looked like this when I added on all the letters and anywhere I made a mistake, I just took some gold or green paint and fixed it. And that's it! Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more from my channel, you can subscribe or click any of the items on screen. And I hope you have a great day.